Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at five of the hardest indices problems. Now these are quite tough, uh, they do normally throw people quite a lot, uh, students do tend to really struggle with these type of questions, uh, but it does require you to have a really good understanding of negative and fractional indices, okay? So I'll make sure that those videos are linked in the description below, but you are going to want to make sure that you check those out first and have a really good understanding of that topic, okay? Now this first one we're going to have a look at is probably the, definitely, well it's definitely the easiest out of the bunch, okay? And we're just going to have a look at this question first just to discuss and you sort of see the concept behind uh, this sort of topic and how these questions are written. But it says here, uh, solve 3 to the power of 2x is 1 over 81. So we're going to have a look at the little methods behind this. So make sure that you grab a piece of paper and a pen and make some notes. And um, we're going to have a look at these questions. So when it comes to one of these questions here, we're having a look at what has actually happened to the 3 here. Now it says it's a power of 2x, and we'll deal with that in a sec. But we want to know what is the power of 3 that enables us to have 1 over 81. Now there are three elements in a power. And if I just make one up, I could have 3 to the power of minus... I don't know, two thirds or something like that, okay? Now there are three elements to the power. Uh, the negative there does the reciprocal, flips it over. Okay, so it does the, I'll just write flip, it does the reciprocal. The bottom there does the root. And again, I always like to think of that as the bit that's underground there, underground the uh, fraction, underneath the fraction line, underground the root. Okay, that three would do a cube root. And the one on the top there is a two, and that's just a normal power, okay? That's the normal power. Okay, so that'd be a power of two, that'd square it. Now thinking about what's actually happened to the three in this scenario, the three has turned into 81, okay, and it's flipped over. So for starters, we already know that it's gonna be a minus in there, so we know it's gonna be three to the power of minus something. Okay, so three to the power of minus something. Now, there is no roots going on, there's no square roots, there's no cube roots, so it's not gonna be a fraction. Okay, we just need to figure out what number gets us to 81. So to get to 81, we can just figure that out, so three squared, is nine, so not squared. Three cubed times it by three is 27. And three to the power of four, that gets us to 81 when we times that by three. So it's not three to the power of four, it's three to the power of minus four. There we go. So we know that it's gonna be three to the power of minus four, but obviously it says three to the power of two x. Okay, so three to the power of minus four is equal to three to the power of two x. Okay, so all we're gonna do is look at this as an equation in terms of the powers. These powers here have to be equal. So basically we've just got a little equation there. We've got that two x has to equal negative four. And then just divide both sides by two. Look, x has to equal negative two. And there's our answer there. Okay, so that's how we're going to approach these questions. Again, there's going to be some quite different ones going on here, but it's all going to revolve around this sort of concept of thinking about the power and thinking about uh, how we get from uh, certain powers to other uh, sort of answers there. Basically, like reversing the answer for a, um, a negative or fractional indice. But there we go. That's our first question, just to ease into these. Still difficult in its own right, um, but it's sort of certainly not um, difficult in comparison to some of the other ones we're going to have a look at here. But here we go. Here's question two. Right, okay, so obviously this is going to be a non-calculator question as well. Uh, we're going to find the value of, and then we've got the fourth root of 27 times 3 times 10 to the power of 8. Now, there are lots of different ways of approaching this. Obviously, we have a calculator. It's nice and easy. We can just stick it all in. This is an explicitly non-calculator question. But we're going to think about what we can do here. Now, to be fair, there is something we could do straight away, and that's the 27 times 3. And we can definitely work that out. 27 times 3 is 81. OK, uh, but we're going to have a think about what this actually means in terms of um, the power, how we're going to find the value of it and maybe another way of writing it. And um, we're going to take it in, in particular steps, but there are other ways of looking at this. Now, when it comes to this, we always want to find out the base numbers. Okay, We want to find out what's the smallest or what's the power that creates the number 81. OK, so thinking about that, we've actually just looked at it on the previous question. That's three to the power of four. Now, we could have looked at it before. Look, 27 is three to the power of three or three cubed. And this three here is three to the power of one. And when we add when we times and we can add the powers together, but 81 is three to the power of four. And we're times in that by 10 to the power of eight. There we go. So we've got three to the power of four times 10 to the power of eight, but in the fourth root of that, now there's another way of writing the fourth root and thinking about powers, there are certain powers and let's just put X to the power of something. X to the power of a half represents a square root. X to the power of a third represents a cube root. So it's x to the power of a quarter that represents a fourth root. There we go, so it's the fourth root. So essentially, we can write this in a different way. We could put all of this to the power of a quarter. Okay, so if I put this in a bracket and I put it to the power of a quarter, that's the same as writing it as a fourth root. Now, obviously, when it comes to powers in brackets, the rule there is to, that you can multiply the powers. So we can actually multiply these powers. So I can actually get the four, the power of four, and I can multiply it by a quarter. And also I can get this power of eight 
and I can multiply that by a quarter as well. So let's actually go about doing that. So three to the power of four, four times a quarter is four quarters, or it's one a quarter of four is one, so it's three to the power of one. And then a quarter of eight for the other power, there you go, is two. Or you could write eight over four, but eight divided by four is two. So a quarter of eight is two. So there we go, now we've got it simplified. We've got three to the power of one times 10 squared, which is three times 100. And that gives us the answer, 300. There we go, and there's our answer. That is the value of that, 300. Okay, just one of the ways that you could approach this. Um, you could also, uh, and it's obviously I've shown you why a fourth root there does that to the powers, but you could always just remember that a fourth root of a power just divides it by four, essentially. But there you go, I've shown you why. I've shown you it's because you can write the fourth root as a power of a quarter, okay? And then obviously multiplying the powers there divides them by four in that case. You've got four times a quarter, which is a quarter of four, and eight times a quarter, which is a quarter of eight. There you go, and it's simplified down to three to the power of one times 10 squared, which comes out as 300. There we go, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, so this question here, we've got 16 to the power of a fifth times two to the power of x equals eight to the power of three quarters. Work out the exact value of x. Now again, this is where it comes down to these sorts of questions here because when it comes to timesing with powers, you can only actually add the powers together when the base numbers are the same. And at the moment on the left here, we've got a base number of two and a base number of 16. But 16 can be written as a power of two. 16, let's have a, just have a think to the side. Two squared is four. 2 cubed is 8, and 2, that's a bit of a weird 2, let's write that again, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. So that 16 there can be written as 2 to the power of 4, but we can't forget it's actually to the power of a fifth there. So if I put that into a bracket, then that is my power of 16. So as that 16 is to the power of a fifth, we obviously need to remember that we need to still put that to the power of 1 fifth. There we go. And we'll deal with that in a sec, but let's have a look at the rest of it. So that's getting times by two to the power of x, and that's equaling eight to the power of three quarters. Now, as you can see over from the left, we've already established that eight is also a power of two, it's two to the power of three. So I can also write that as a power of two as well. I can write eight as two cubed, and that is to the power of three quarters. There we go. Now we can have a look at actually dealing with all of this. So having a look at what we can do then, again, in the brackets, look, we can multiply these powers to get rid of the brackets. So if we multiply that out, these two powers here, we get 2 to the power of 4 fifths, okay, 4 times a fifth, not forgetting 4 could be written as 4 over 1, and it's times in like normal fraction rules. So 2 to the power of 4 fifths times 2 to the power of x, and again, that equals, and we'll times this power out, look, we get 9 quarters, so 2 to the power of 9 quarters. There we go. So essentially, we've got some... Uh, like, well, we've just got to compare these powers now because we've got all the same base numbers because, because these are all now twos. We've got four fifths, that power there, add the x, the next power of two, and that's going to equal nine quarters. So I can actually take this away from the powers completely and I can just say, okay, well, four fifths plus x, whatever that is, is going to equal nine quarters. And that's the little sum that I need to solve now. 4 fifths plus something is equal to 9 quarters, or in other words, I could do the reverse of that, I could do 9 quarters take away 4 fifths, and that's going to equal x. So if I do that to the side, look, x has got to be equal to 9 quarters take away the 4 fifths. Now obviously when we've got fractions, we need to have a common denominator, so we've got some fractions coming in now. We've got to times this left side by 5, and the right side by 4, top and bottom, so we get a common denominator. So we've got x has to equal, let's have a look, 9 times 5 is 45 over 20. Take away 16 over 20. There we go, and all we need to do is take those away from each other, and we've got our answer there. So 45 take away 16 is 29, so it's 29 over 20. There we go. And that's our final answer there. And of course, you could actually convert that into a mixed number. It doesn't want it in this question. It doesn't ask for it, but you could write that as 1 and 9 twentieths as well. There we go. Just converting it back in. 20 goes into 29 once with a remainder of 9 twentieths left over. There we are. So you could leave either of those. They are both the exact value of x. But it's absolutely fine there just to leave it as 29 over 20. But again, with this type of question, you've got to think about making those uh, base numbers the same so that you can obviously compare the powers there and apply your normal power rules, okay, T adding them together when your time's in, and obviously time and times in the powers together when you've got them in the brackets there. But there we are, that's quite a tricky question. We're going to have a look at another one now. 
Okay, so on to our fourth question. Now, this isn't a very nice looking one, uh, but there's something in this we need to deal with straight away. It says, given that 3 to the power of minus n is 0 0.2, find the value of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of n. So we need to figure out what n is, otherwise we're not going to be able to do that power. But this here, 3 to the power of minus n, that can be written in a different way. And we mentioned it earlier in, the que in, earlier in these questions that a negative power is the same as writing the reciprocal of it, okay? So it's basically 1 over 3 to the power of n. And we'll write this down over here, 3 to the power of minus n, the minus flips it over, so it becomes 1 over 3, and the n there is the normal power. Now, obviously, that means it's going to be a power of n top and bottom. There we are, so there we are, that's that. But obviously, 1 to the power of anything is going to stay as 1, so we don't really need to put the n up there, so I'll get rid of that. It's just 1 over 3 to the power of n. So actually, when we look at this, we've got in another way of writing it, 1 over 3 to the power of n equals 0 0.2. Or in other words, 1 divided by something is 0 0.2. And again, we can think about a logical or an easy way of uh, figuring this out here. If you have something like 10 divided by 2 equals 5, you can write that another way, can't you? You can write, well, therefore, 10 divided by 5 has to equal 2. Uh, essentially, we can just swap these over. The 3 to the power of n and the 0 0.2 can be switched around. And that would give us something that we can actually work out. Because now we'd have 1 divided by 0 0.2 equals 3 to the power of n. There we go. So 1 divided by 0 0.2, 0 0.2 fits into 1 5 times, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.81, it fits in 5 times. So there we go, we've figured out that 3 to the power of n has to equal 5. And that's quite an important piece of information because now we've got an actual number that we can start to plug into our next thing. And it says over here, and let's get rid of this bit, it says find the value of 3 to the power of 4 to the power of n. And again, there's a bit of a logical sort of explanation as to how we're going to approach this bit as well because it doesn't matter whether we have, and let's just go to a different one, let's imagine uh, 3 squared to the power of 3. Uh, that gives us 3 to the power of 6. And that's exactly the same as if we had 3 cubed to the power of 2. Okay, just swapping those powers around, that still gives us 3 to the power of 6. Both of them give us the same answer. So obviously this thing here doesn't have to be written in the way that it is. It could be written in a different way. We could write 3 to the power of n to the power of 4. There you go, just swapping them around the other way. So actually, now we can actually put this number in because we know what 3 to the power of n is. 3 to the power of n is 5. So this thing here is 5. So we can actually just write that with a 5 in there instead. As we know 3 to the power of n is 5, we can just say that this has to be 5 to the power of 4. And we can actually go about working that out. So 5 squared is 25. 5 cubed times it by 5 again is 125. And then times it by 5 again, which would give us 5 to the power of 4, would give us 625. There we are. So 5 to the power of 4 is 625. And there is our final answer for that one. Now again, that's a very difficult one there because it's very unique in what we're doing. We're writing things in different ways. We're writing the powers obviously differently there with the negative power. We're writing it as the reciprocal version, flipping it over. Uh, we're rearranging it to try and find numbers. We're swapping powers around in the brackets. It's a very, very nasty little question there. But hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with what you can do with powers. And obviously sort of just playing around and moving things about and seeing what you can create when you sort of just sort of write these powers in different ways. But there we go. That is a very nasty one. And we've got one more to have a look at from before we finish. And I definitely think this is the hardest one. But here it is. Okay, so on to our last question. Well done if you've made it this far, because these are not uh, easy questions by any means. These are all quite difficult and uh, can, can definitely the kind of questions that do seem to hurt your head when you have a little go at working through them. But this question here, we've got 3 to the power of a is 1 over 9, 3 to the power of b is 9 root 3, and 3 to the power of c is 1 over root 3. And it says work out the value of a plus b plus c. Now some of these are okay. And some of the bits are not very nice here. Finding these values of A, B, and C. The first one's okay. 3 to the power of A. I think this is all right. Okay, what has happened to 3 there? Well, for 1, it's flipped over. It's become 1 over. So we know it's going to be a minus power. So that's going to be 3 to the power of minus something. And the 3's turned into a 9. And 3 to the power of 2 is uh, 9. So it's going to be minus 2. So that's okay. We've got A. A is minus 2. Okay, it's flipped over and, and the number is squared. So that one's not too bad. Let's write that down up here. We've got A... It's minus 2. 
Right on to the next one. Uh, now I'm going to skip this one out in the middle for the moment because I think that's the hardest one. I've just spotted this one at the end here that looks okay. Okay, 3 to the power of C is 1 over root 3. That's not too bad. So it's 1 over again. It's very similar to the first one. So it's 3 to the power of minus something. But it's not, the 3 hasn't turned into a different number. It hasn't gone up. It's become a root. Okay, so it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a, um, a normal number. It's going to be a fraction this time. So we know it's going to be a fraction. Okay, one on the top because the three hasn't gotten any bigger, but it has become a square root. Okay, and that is a two root or a square root, so it's a two on the bottom. So it's three to the power of minus a half. Minus because it's flipped over, and a two on the bottom because it's done a, the square root of the three there. And again, we don't have to write the square root on the one, but it could be there. But the square root of one is one, so it's not been written. Okay, but there we go. That's why we've got our minus a half. So we've got C now. C equals minus a half. There we go. Now it's the B in the middle, which is, I think, is the most difficult one here. Okay, so figuring out this one is not very nice. Okay, so figuring out A and C was okay, but this one's not very nice at all. Now that three, what's that power going to be? There's no one over, there's no fraction, so it's not going to be a minus, but there's a root involved and there's a nine there, so it is going to be a fraction. Okay, we've got something going on on the top and something going on on the bottom. Now it's only a normal square root, so we can already establish that it has to be a two on the bottom. We just need to figure out what the power is on the top. So how are we going to get to 9 root 3? Now, the square root of 3 is root 3. Okay, so that is uh, just as it is at the moment. Now, if we square that, okay, so times it by another root 3, that would become 3. There we are. So that would be root 3 squared. If I was to times it by another root 3 again, that would be root 3 cubed. And if I times it by root 3 again, I get 3 root 3. So we're almost getting there. Okay, obviously it's nine root three, not three root three. So I'm gonna to have to keep going. I need to keep counting up the powers as I go here. So I've done a power of one. Uh, that was my power of two. And then here was my power of three. So I'm gonna go for a power of four now. So I'm gonna times it by another root three. That's gonna give me my power of four, just keeping a little track as I go. And that becomes three root nine. And three root nine is three times three. Root nine is three there. So three times three is just the whole number nine. There we go, so that's my power of four. And then I need to keep on going because I'm not quite there yet. So I'm nine at the moment. I'm gonna times it by another root three and that's gonna make my power of five. There we go, we're at five now. And that becomes nine root three. There we go, so we got, we, got, we got there in the end, that's our nine root three. We'll be able to times root three together five times to get there. So that is gonna be a power of five. And there we are, so three to the power of five over two. Again, that power on the bottom there would do the square root of three, which is root three, and a power of five, we figured out just by times in lots of roots threes together. Okay, so there we go, that is uh, our value of B there. B is five over two, I think that's quite nasty. Don't like that at all, I think it's quite a nasty question to have. But we've got our three values that we need to add together. Okay, so if we get rid of some of this, let's have a look at just adding these together and figuring out what we've got. Now this last bit isn't too bad, just adding them together is quite nice actually, because we've got A is minus two, so we've got minus two, and we're gonna add to that five over two, and we're gonna add to that minus a half. There we go. So you could always convert these into decimals if you want. It's probably a bit easier to look at. You've got minus 2 plus 5 over 2, which is 2.5. And then plus minus, so minus 0 0.5. So minus 2 add 2.5 is 0 0.5. There you go. So 0 0.5 take away 0 0.5 just equals 0. There you go. So our final answer for that question is 0. They all just cancel each other out. So there we go. Quite a nasty question there. Um, Definitely one that did seem to throw did seem to throw a lot of students. It's quite a tricky one, particularly that one with the B there. But it's all about just having a very good understanding of negative and fractional powers and just being able to sort of unravel them and do them in reverse. Uh, but again, these are very, very nasty, okay? But there we go. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.